want to see what this is about? You ever heard of Toronto Dollars? Well, there you go. Well, I was on Dragon's Den two weeks ago, and I won't try to explain this you invest in Toronto Dollars. And all of the problem is they could use Toronto Dollars for lots of business. Well, no, no, I know, I know. But the point is, I was there saying, I don't need your money for me, but I want you to invest in the Toronto Dollars to help you heal. I had to offer them a 10% profit on their money. A lot of systems these days do that, right? So that's the story. Well, they had they had to interrupt my 15, my 17 minutes there, or one minute joke. Said Turmel wants to run the Canadian economy on poker chips because I hadn't used the poker chip in a month. Points to show her your support. So I really wanted to do a Brantford dollar system and support the Toronto dollars because you see a word of it. I'm so happy. Besides, when I made it back down from the they all said, no, 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 no. But I slapped them around for 15 minutes. I'm more if you don't see the advantage of 10% of the Toronto dollars over 2% of the event. I was not vicious, but I was pretty good. I cut it down to the shoulder. So, when a jury sees the 17 minute pitch, what really happened in one minute jury? I am known as John the Engineer Turmel, and I'm famous for this software. You might have heard of Toronto Dollars in your town 25 years ago. You might have heard of Toronto Let's Toronto Dollars. Well, I financed the first prototype software, my claim to fame. But the other night, I was on the Dragon's Den trying to explain to them how investing in the Toronto dollar system in the St. Lawrence market, let them put the money in the bank, get the interest to do community services, and everybody uses local chips, local currency, and get an extra 10% premium for buying local and not at Walmart. Great idea. I was pushing it to the Dragons. Well, they thumped me out, misrepresented the pitch completely, so that tomorrow I'm filing a statement to claim on them for defamation. But that's a different story. You're going to hear about Argentinian provinces when they ran out of money. Their unions forced the governments to pay them with small denomination provincial bonds, which became their currency, and they ended unemployment that way. Now you have the right to be as unemployed and suffer as much misery as you guys want, but there is an example here you can read about it and I'll be talking about it all night. Finally, last month, November, Supreme Court of Canada, case 33319, John Turnell versus the CRTC, Supreme Court made it official. Rogers Cablevision does not does have the discretion to exclude candidates from debates. So, I was excluded from a Rogers debate way back. I complained to the CRTC, went to the Supreme Court, and now it's official. Like last night's debate, you only see the big four. You don't have no more right to see all your choices ever again. Thanks to the Turmel versus CRTC ruling two months ago that didn't make the news. So you didn't hear about why you're never going to see us on the tube anymore, and only the same four you always see on Queen's Park. But that's the decision, Supreme Court of Canada, it's official now. In St. Paul's, Goldhawk had me on TV with the minor candidates, but we were on video. This time here, since this decision, they had us on a one-minute telephone call. You ain't going to see us no more. The good stuff is going to be gone. It's going to be back to the gray and the boring and the slow. Well, anyway, you're going to be able to find out what you miss when you don't get to hear all the opinions and only get to hear the menu they're going to give you. And that's 33319, case at the Supreme Court of Canada in November. Turmel, when he told me officially, Rogers has the discretion to exclude people from debates because of the Vezina decision that said that debates don't have to be equitable. Check it out. Finally, how they're using a community currency in Japan to solve their health problems, where you can take care of someone's relative in your town, and the hours that you bank, someone will take care of your mama in their town. So their banking hours of community care, allowing people to do this in their spare time, which can be spent claiming care later. It's the time standard of money. It's going to elevate human time equal to 
to a piece of gold in the eyes of a bank for collateral. Right now, a piece of gold, wow, bank's excited. You walk in, I can work 10 hours a day, get out of here, you work nothing. Piece of gold is what they want. Well, when the time standard happens, like in Japan and many other countries, you just haven't caught up yet. They are taking care of their elderly and their people by self-helping. You can pay by taking care of people. You can pay by doing something useful for the hospital. There are so many ways time banks can help you that I could explain every single financial problem you come at me with an answer for time banks. It's just too bad you can't think of those answers yourselves yet, but you will someday. I remember way back when the Liberals put out the Tory bums, and then the NDP put out the Liberal bums, and then the Tories put out the NDP bums, and then the Liberals put out the Tory bums, and obviously the present system just keeps generating the same bums. <coughs> Proportional representation offers you a little bit more choice. But of course, Electoral reform, how can you be talking about that when you just lost the right to hear all your candidates in a debate? Gone. Didn't hear about it, make the news, but from now on, you're not going to hear anybody but the big four pushing the same stuff you hear every day. Nothing new, officially. Well, now that it's official that the courts have struck down your right to hear everybody, there's only one final recourse. In the past, the only time I ever got to participate when Big Brother stood up and said no, was when my fellow candidates stood up for me and said, we don't go unless he does too. Now, I don't expect this of these guys, but it happened before. You know, a Tory once, a liberal once. NDP stayed on the bid all alone, she won. Not since then have we had anybody lost. So, yeah, democracy's in big trouble, but it ain't as simple as not proportional representation and slightly skewed. You lost a major right when you lost the right to see all the choices on your voting card and letting Rogers decide who you're going to get to see. Bigger problems than that are not out there right now. They don't have enough money, right? None of them. They're all short of money and they don't love to have some more. And if only they had some more money, things wouldn't be so bad, but they ain't got enough money. Well, I'm tired of explaining Toronto dollars, so I don't go to chicks. Maybe more will stay. Imagine now that it's flat. The city of Toronto pours a billion in poker chips off by the city of Toronto. And then they pay people to build houses with these poker chips. And as fast as the houses go up, the poker chips are going to go Now, I say, hey, nice collateral backing up the chips. But as the collateral depreciates over the next hundred years, I want you to pay me back the chips as the house depreciates. So if 100 grand in chips was in the building of the house, I want to cheat over that every year while it depreciates. Well, 83 bucks a month ain't bad to pay for the depreciation of a house when you're used to paying six, 800 a month with the extra seven in interest. When you're buying a house, you're not buying the building. That's one pie worth of money. You're paying three pies, two more in interest. It in, pervades the whole price structure. And I found a way to beat it. I'm a professional gambler, teaching a system of Canada's only mathematics and gambling course. And I'm trying to show you how to be winners and beat the rate. And the best way to do that is to run the chips yourselves and then start building houses with your own chips and start paying for your own chips and stop begging for help. I can build those. I didn't hear you were planning to build houses. I heard concern about not being able to do it. You know, when I was um, 14 years old, I saw homeless people when I You think I'd be the same as these guys? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is my 72nd time running for election. 72 times with 70 losses one time. And people think I do it because I like the moves. No, I need to get I'm already going to get his book of records for losing. Most elections get tested not losing. You know, I don't want to do it for losing. But it's a real pain when you think about it. And yes, the candidates make the promises. But never once do they promise they're going to actually do anything. They say that they want things to be good for you. They're concerned.
sir. And all it's well couched, but they never actually promise anything, and they never break the promises. You see, they're concerned. They're concerned. They have priorities. Your concerns are their priorities, and they will be for them too. They want to look at every problem with a caring heart. They really do. They don't know what to do about it, but they want to look at it with a caring heart. And that's all they're promising you, and they did it, and they didn't lie. So don't tell me you think they lied when they didn't do anything, when they didn't promise you to do anything. They just promised you they'd look at it. I'm the only guy who promised you I'd engineer anything, because I'm the only guy with an engineering degree up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that uh, this is my very first time uh, running as, as a politician.